Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick. As you probably know, I'm a big Linux fanboy. I love desktop Linux and I use Linux on the server side for all of my home lab related things. So it's fair to say that I'm at least a Linux enthusiast. However, my certifications would argue something different. You see, I'm a cybersecurity engineer in my day job and I have a couple certifications one of which being the Microsoft Cybersecurity Expert Architect one. Before I worked in cybersecurity, I managed fleets of thousands of Windows devices as a sysadmin, so I have a really deep understanding of both Linux and Windows, and today we're going to talk about Windows 11 specifically. Is it really so bad? Well, I'm somebody who knows it inside and out, and we're going to talk about where it falls in the market today. So with all of that being said, let's dig right in. So Windows 11. Let's start with the UI and the user experience. Windows 11, I will say, is very pretty on the surface. Uh, not on the surface as in the tablet, it's very pretty on the surface as in underneath it's a horrible mess. But I will say the aesthetics uh, of like the start menu and the taskbar and the rounded corners and that mica material that Microsoft uses, uh, I, I will say it looks good. I'm not going to say that it's ugly. I mean, this is subjective, so uh, you know you, you might have a different opinion, but I think it looks quite good. The problem is once you get under that top layer, you end up looking at tons of old menus, some of which date back to Windows 98. I mean, seriously, it, it's that bad. And so Microsoft has a big problem where they keep adding a new framework for the user interface on top of all the other ones. Every new Windows release introduces some new UI framework and they slap it on top of all the existing UI frameworks that they have in the system and uh, it just creates this horrible kludgy mess because they never throw anything out. They're like, they're like hoarders, except the things they're hoarding is backwards compatibility. So Windows is just a kludgy mess of different user interfaces. Like even the up-to-date applications, they don't usually share very much in common beyond the superficial stuff like the mica material that Windows are made of, which again looks quite fetching. Something small but really annoying to me about Windows 11 is that the dark mode is still incomplete. You still get flashbanged by random bright mode windows that, from applications that just haven't been updated in years. And it's just incredible to me how there's been a dark mode in Windows for about 10 years now, and they still haven't finished it. Speaking of things they haven't finished, there's still two settings apps in Windows. You have the control panel, then you have the settings app. And the worst part is, neither of them have all the settings in them. And so you might be digging through various menus in the settings app and it'll send you to the control panel. And then you might be dicking around in the control panel and it'll send you to the, to the settings app. And it's like, it, I've literally had experiences where it bounced me back and forth between the settings app and the control panel. And it's, it's mind blowing to me. And, you know, the, the settings app was created with Windows 8. That came out in 2012. Like, the start... <laughs> the settings app is not new. It's been around for over a decade, and they still haven't moved all the settings into it. Like, it's just ridiculous. It's almost lazy. And then the ads. The ads. You get ads when you're setting up the computer. You get ads in your start menu. You get ads in the widget menu. You get ads in your apps menu. You get ads in notifications. You get ads in the settings app. You get ads on the start button. You get ads on the desktop. You get ads on the lock screen. <laughs> oh my god. It's so bad. Like every facet of Windows has been bastardized and turned into an advertisement delivery machine. Now, I, I will say, being fair, if you sit down and give yourself about an hour, you can go through all the various settings and turn pretty much all of that stuff off. And it only takes an hour if you know what you're doing. 
If you don't know what you're doing, then plan on spending half a day cleaning this up. Like, an operating system should not require multiple hours of work to get it into a usable condition. Because with the amount of shit shoveled into Windows in the form of advertisements, I'd say it's unusable in its default setup. And speaking of setup, oh my god, that setup process is painful. Three times it stopped to download and run updates. Why can't it just do it all in one shot? But three times it stopped to download updates. And then, uh, when you rename your computer, it reboots the whole thing, adding more time to your setup. The setup process tries to trick you into giving Microsoft money with dark UI patterns. Seriously? That's just... that's not great. And the setup process in general takes at least an hour when you set up a new Windows computer, compared to Linux, where you can be up and running in 15 minutes, tops. But you're looking at a minimum of an hour on Windows. Oh, and you can't forget Copilot. Everything has Copilot now. Windows has Copilot. Microsoft Office has Copilot. Copilot has Copilot. They shove this shit down your throat so damn hard. It is painful. Like, I don't want to use Copilot. I don't want Copilot in everything. I will go seek out a large language model when I want to use one, and it will probably be one that I'm running on my home server. So I don't want Copilot. I, it's just a useless piece of bloatware at this point. Okay, so that's enough about the user interface and user experience. It's, it's really, really bad. But let's talk about something with a more positive twist on it, and that's the technical capabilities. So starting off on the list of good things, Windows Sandbox is a really smart feature. Basically creates a disposable Windows virtual machine that you can spin up in a couple seconds, and then when you close it, it deletes everything. Hey, that's clever. That's smart. That gives people a safe way to test sketchy stuff. Uh, I like it. That's good. And the Windows subsystem for Linux is incredibly good. Like, WSL is probably my favorite feature of Windows, probably because it lets me interact with Linux instead of Windows, but it's really powerful. And you can have as many distributions and as many copies of those distributions available as you like. And it's super simple to integrate, like it integrates really well with the Windows Explorer. Like you can go into your Linux virtual hard disk through the Windows uh, file browser. Really cool stuff, like it's so well integrated and it's open source. And I just think Microsoft did a really, really good job with WSL. And speaking of stuff like emulation and virtualization, Hyper-V. Hyper-V is a totally competent hypervisor. I think that it's completely usable. I mean, yeah, the UI is old, but if it's uh, PowerShell. I, I love PowerShell. I install PowerShell on everything. It's open source. It's a great shell. I love the syntax that it has. It's very verbose, which I prefer. Uh, PowerShell is great. I, I legitimately really like PowerShell. The Terminal app is also another good one. The Terminal app, it lets you pick between PowerShell, Azure Cloud Shell, WSL, and Command Prompt, all in one application, all of your shells. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's a good feature. And then and I want to talk in general about managing Windows systems. Obviously, in my experience, having managed thousands of these things, as a systems administrator, uh, I have a lot of experience with getting things uniform and working well. Uh, management of Windows systems is difficult, but extremely flexible. Like, you do have to know what you're doing, otherwise you're going to make an insecure clusterfuck. Uh, but if, if you sit down and you learn how the stuff works, it's incredibly flexible how you can manage your Windows devices. Almost anything that you can think of can be customized across your fleet. You just have to pony up the money for Active Directory or Intune. So with all of that in mind, it makes a lot of sense why businesses prefer to use Windows. It's really the industry standard in pretty much every industry, and the management capabilities are just about as flexible as what you can get on Linux. The only difference is you can actually hire people who know how to do that stuff on Windows. <laughs>
In my area, Linux professionals are pretty rare. And I would be remiss if we didn't talk about Windows 11 security. So the default settings on Windows 11 prioritize compatibility over security. Microsoft has deliberately chosen to ship Windows with less security than it can have in order to make sure it works with everybody's stuff and everyone's software. Obviously, I don't agree with this approach. I, I think that these days, locking things down out of the box is really the only way to make sure there's mass adoption of security features. However, I will say, if you sit down and you go through all the security features one at a time and you turn all the optional stuff on, and there's a lot of optional stuff, but if you could take the time to go through it an hour or so and turn all the stuff on that you might need, uh, it's, it's okay. I mean, so Windows is always going to be a vulnerability riddled nightmare. It's just way too big a project, but of those optional security features, a couple of my favorites are virtualization-based security, which is a really smart idea, basically virtualizes very sensitive parts of the Windows system and therefore isolates it from the rest. Virtualization-based security is cool, and I think that Linux should adopt something like that, probably in the form of containerized security. I guess it already kind of has done that with some distributions, huh? Like Micro's OpenSUSE Micro OS. But I will just say that if somebody puts effort into it, there's a good chance that they'll be able to hack most Windows systems. It's just not a very secure OS. It wasn't built with security in mind. It's not developed with security in mind. If you're looking for something secure and you're concerned about these things, Windows may not be your first choice. I mean, you can lock it down pretty well, especially once you start introducing third-party programs like, uh, like Threat Locker. But all in all, it's don't use Windows if security is what's most important to you. So finally, I want to talk about the future. So it is clear to me that Microsoft does not care about the home consumer market when it comes to Windows. They already dominate, they have no reason to improve the product. All they have to do is slap a new UI framework on top of it every six years and they'll, they'll print money. Uh, but I don't think Microsoft wants the home consumer market anymore. Like Microsoft makes all their money with Azure. Like that's, that's their bread and butter. Windows is a vehicle which delivers people to Azure and therefore giving Microsoft money. Uh, so I, I think that in the future, we're going to see Linux kind of creep up in market share in the home market, and that will potentially influence the business market as well. Uh, however, I think the business market's going to take much longer to change because generally speaking, in a business processes, you want to get your money's worth out of a process. It takes a lot of man hours to figure out a business process. As far as the future for like the, the Windows operating system, uh, I, I think that the UI and the UX is going to get worse. Um, I think the user interface is going to continue to be pretty on the surface and then a nightmare underneath. I think it's going to continue to be bloated and complicated. They're going to put more ads in more places somehow. Like Windows is just a vehicle that delivers you to other ways Microsoft can make money off you. If you're a consumer, if you're a business, then Windows delivers you to Azure where they can make more money off you. And it's just such a shame because like Windows has some really interesting, really smart technical underpinnings, but the product is just ruined by poor management and bad UI. And that's not to even mention the privacy concerns, but I have I think this video is long enough. I don't think I need to say much about Windows privacy, except that it's non-existent. If you care about privacy, then you're not going to use Windows. Anyway, thank you for watching my video.